everyone. Thank you for joining us on the Voice of Pancreatic Cancer podcast. I'm your host, Miranda Weinberg. And if you don't know about the Cena Magwitz Foundation, we're a nonprofit that's committed to the awareness, prevention, and cure of pancreatic cancer. I'm very excited to welcome with me two ladies from Honor Health Research Institute today. We have Gail Jamison. You may recognize her. She's a familiar face, and she's been with us before. She is a nurse practitioner at Honor Health, as well as a clinical investigator. And today we also have joining with us Terry Taylor, who is a registered dietitian at Honor Health. And welcome both of you ladies. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Thank you, Miranda. It's really a pleasure to be with you today and to have the opportunity to discuss this very important topic of nutrition in the care of our patients with pancreatic cancer. And I have the privilege today of sharing this conversation with Terry Taylor who is just a, a very skilled, um, very experienced dietitian, who's also board certified in oncology, who has helped so many of our patients over the years. So thank you, Terry, for participating in the conversation today. Oh, the pleasure is all mine. Thank you both for this opportunity to really share some information about nutrition and pancreatic cancer. Thank you, Terry. We got many questions about different types of diet. Should I be doing intermittent fasting? Should I be on the ketogenic diet? What what may help me the most? And and the bottom line is we're still not quite sure in pancreatic cancer. And we certainly recommend what Terry's recommending in terms of high protein if this is outside of a clinical trial. But what is a ketogenic diet? So it's a diet that is very low in carbohydrates. It's very low in protein and high in fat. Now, this is different than the Adkins diet that many people are familiar with because the Adkins diet is low in carbs, but it's high in protein and high in fat. But again, a ketogenic diet um, is very low in both carbs and protein. And by definition, it should only be, the carbs should only be 10% of your daily intake or less than or equal to 50 grams of um, carbs. And I think just to put that in perspective for people, 50 grams of carbohydrate, if you're looking at like a half a cup of pasta, that's 15 grams of carbohydrate right there, or a piece of fruit is 15 grams. So you can see that it's really cutting back on things like grains and fruits in particular. So what goes well in a formulated ketogenic diet? And this is just a visual. And and I will share that I'm not going to take a lot of time going through this, but I have these slides referenced. And for those who are interested in this, you certainly can go to the references and learn much more about this. But this is just an example of percentages in a ketogenic diet uh, in terms of percentage of carbs, proteins, et cetera. So what are some key metabolic effects of a ketogenic diet or what we call keto therapy? There are many molecular based um, changes that can occur based on changing the diet this way. We know that a ketogenic diet suppresses glucose availability to tumors and we know high glucose is not a good thing. Uh, It reduces insulin levels and insulin stimulated cancer growth. So Terry mentioned that as well and increasing circulating ketone bodies, which may have a direct anti-tumor effect. The ketogenic diet can also inhibit tumor cell metabolism, generate toxic levels of what we call reactive oxygen species, and this is toxic. If you look at antioxidants protecting cells, reactive oxygen species is just the opposite, um, and it's toxic for cells. And also the ketogenic diet can add this reductive stress, we call it in mouse models, which sensitizes tumor cells to chemotherapy. There's a little cartoon that I have here that if you're interested, go to these two references and it will make a lot of sense to you, but just a lot of changes that occur in the metabolism for these are mice who were um, just given chemotherapy on a normal diet and mice that were on a ketogenic diet and how like their ketones, this um, hydroxybutyrate really increased, glucose decreased. Again, I'm not gonna spend time on that, but it, it is very interesting science. Also the ketogenic diet is thought to decrease inflammation. This is a very busy slide and all I wanna comment on this, again, you can look it up, is that there are a lot of small preclinical studies, meaning in the lab, in animals, looking at is there benefit in 
all different types of cancers. The majority of work has been in primary brain tumors, which are glioblastoma tumors. And actually there is evidence that a ketogenic diet along with treatment in glioblastoma patients is beneficial in improving um, their disease response. And there's you know, speculation in terms of proposed effect on tumor cells, what's actually happening and what's not beneficial. Clinical studies, there are a lot of studies out there, again, the majority of them looking at brain tumors, but it's an area of interest. And we're really looking at does diet modification impact disease response to therapy or just overall disease course. But the most important thing on this slide is that what we need are randomized controlled clinical trials. We don't have the information for most cancers, including pancreas cancer, to say that this really is going to benefit you if you have pancreas cancer and you go on this diet. So even though the animal models are encouraging, we need this in human trials because we've had a lot of experiences with new drugs or new methods that have worked really well in animal models. And when we translate that into humans, our bodies are just different and we may not see the same results, but we're, we're interested and we're encouraged. So why would we do a pancreatic cancer trial involving the uh, ketogenic diet? So on the left is a uh, diagram here that will show you some of the mouse model work that one of our colleagues, Dr. Joshua Rabinowitz and his team at Princeton University have done. They've taken this three drug combination that actually came out of our clinic, gemcitabine, napaclitaxel, and cisplatinum, which we refer to as the triple, which has been a very effective treatment for patients in all stages actually of pancreatic cancer. And a lot of that work has been published, will be published. I did put one source here, GM Oncology, that we published where we saw in a group of patients with newly diagnosed advanced pancreas cancer, where using these three drugs, we actually saw a 71% disease response rate. Patients felt better, they did better, they lived longer. And so that's why Dr. Rabinowitz and his team used this three drug combination in their mouse model. And what I'd like you to look at is if you look at, these are mice that had pancreas cancer. If you look at the green line, so this is using this triple chemotherapy without any diet modification. And if you look at the survival and then the number of days that these mice lived, it was better than just on the ketogenic diet alone or just the control, which was no intervention. But when this triple chemotherapy was added along with the ketogenic diet, the mouses did better. They had good disease response and they lived much longer. Now, not all, not 100%, but it was impressive. And this study was repeat, repeated multiple times with similar, similar results in um, these mice models. Now, again, these are mice. <laughs> these are not human beings. But this is really the background that led us to say, if we look at nutritional ketosis, may that enhance the vulnerability of tumor cells to chemotherapy. This is not diabetic ketoacidosis. This is nutritionally induced uh, ketosis. So lastly, I just want to mention a study that we do have going on here at Honor Health, and it's open at multiple sites across the country. It's being sponsored by a group in Scottsdale here called TD2, or Translational Drug Development. And what we are doing is looking at 40 patients across the country, newly diagnosed with advanced pancreas cancer. And if they're interested and they want to proceed, they're either randomized to get this three-drug chemotherapy with a regular diet or the three drug chemotherapy with the ketogenic diet. One thing that I think makes this study very unique is that patients on the ketogenic diet arm are independently monitored daily by Verta Health. And this is a company that has worked a lot in diabetes management with ketogenic diet, and they've had a lot of positive outcomes. So they're very skilled, very knowledgeable, but they work every day with patients remotely. Patients are checking 
checking finger stick blood sugars, they're checking AccuCheck for their ketone levels. And so it's much more accurate of knowing are people really in ketosis as opposed to just writing down a diary, this is what I ate, or very intermittent um, blood testing. So if there are any out there who are interested in learning more about this study, it's open. We are recruiting patients. Uh, they can either call Joyce Schaefer, I have her contact here, or Katie Grizarek, who is at TD2, and get more information. So again, when we look at these new diets, they're trendy, they may be exciting, we may even see them work well in animal models, but we have to see how does this really work in patients with these diseases. Yeah, I think as well, the importance of sustaining those types of eating plans, because it can be a big change for people. So the idea of having this support from the resources in the trial, and again, to maintain that ketosis, and again, to be able to live this kind of eating you know, because it would be for, you know, a long time to be doing that. So making it something that is livable along with keeping you in ketosis is really, really important. Right. And it's very much in contrast with what we usually recommend, right? I mean, we're recommending a high protein diet. This is a very low protein diet. And so it really does deserve study. Well, Gail, thank you so much for breaking that down for us. I think you did an excellent job of making it uh, easy to understand as well. And um, I'm glad that we have the contact information for patients that are interested in learning more and seeing if they would qualify for that study. So uh, thank you both ladies so much for your time. I mean, this has been such an informative uh, episode. And um, Gail, Terry, I mean, I'm wondering if there's anything we missed, anything else you wanted to add? I would just uh, encourage people to, again, consider their nutrition as part of their treatment. If their physicians or whomever their um, caregivers are are not bringing that up to please, you know, ask about that. Do you have resources for a dietitian where you're getting your treatment or not? And really encourage them to be seeking that nutritional guidance. Well, thank you ladies so much and um, appreciate everyone for tuning in and look forward to talking to you both again. Thank you so much for all that you do. Thank you.